Thanks a lot, Simon, for this uh, nice overview of the micro tissues, which is already quite an old technology, but has still a huge application in, in current uh, drug development. And with this, I would like to introduce our last speaker for today. It's Nadia Benkirane Yesel. She's the research director and head of Osteoarticular and Dental Regenerative Nanomedicine at the INSERM, the French National Institute for Health and Medical Research in Strasbourg. She did her PhD at the University Louis Pasteur in Strasbourg. She was developing their uh, pseudopeptides as synthetic vaccines. She did several postdocs at the Institute of Pasteur in Paris, uh, where she was interested in immunotherapy for HIV. And also in the States, she was uh, doing a second postdoc where she was applying modified peptides as vaccines Thank you very against much. FMDV, food and mouth disease. Thank you. Thank virus. you very much. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. So I am from the National Institute of Health and uh, Medical Research in uh, Strasbourg, like he said before. We are uh, working on repair and tissue engineering. Our team have developed different strategies connected to a uh, nanoactive implant for drug delivery for gen, uh, silencing and gen, gene therapy. And I will present to you today the, the third part uh, dealing with smart implant for regenerative nanomedicine. That means the third generation of implant, uh, including incorporating not only active molecules, but also living cells. So to develop active implant, we can absorb directly the active molecules on the surface of the implant. The implant can be degradable or not degradable, independent of the use. We can do chemical grafting. In the first case, we have desorption of the degradation of this only absorbed on the top molecules. The chemical grafting, we can do it by reversible or reverse, irreversible attachment. In our case, we need the free active molecules able to interact with the receptors of cells. So we need a reversible uh, attachment. In this case, we have click chemistry, but the click chemistry is not yet uh, for the, the health and the clinical application. In our laboratory, we have patented nano reservoir technology. This alternates absorption of oppositively charged uh, molecules like polypeptide or polysaccharide. We can build here uh, step by step this nanostructured coating uh, on the top of the implant, and we can incorporate inside active molecules. In this case, the mechanism is uh, cell contact dependent release. That means we have cells interacting with the coating, degradation, and uh, catch the, the active molecules. So we have here cell contact dependent uh, release. For smart nanostructured implants with the interaction with the clinic, we developed active implants for regenerative medicine for bone and cartilage regeneration. We did uh, here two strategies, uh, planar surface like uh, a membrane we can implant for regenerative medicine or capsules or particles we can inject. We did this uh, nano reservoir technology around uh, uh, on the surface of the planar uh, implantable implant by incorporation of bone morphogenic protein 2 or TGA beta 1. In this case, we are so far from the clinic because we used here embryonic stem cells. In this case, we have shown that after 21 days, we have osteogenic gene expression here in black than the control. We did the same uh, application by using uh, microparticles, and we did the coating. In this case, we have shown that we are able to incorporate active molecules around the, the particles here. And here, visualization with polyelizing fits by confocal uh, micro, uh, microscopy, we can show here the capsules. We mix these capsules with uh, embryonic stem cells, and we can see here after implantation, we have uh, really bone formation, like you can see here, osteocyte in the lacuna and hydroxyapatite uh, expression. So it's very nice. We can validate the technology here by incorporation of growth factors, but we cannot go to the clinic because we use the really uh, embryonic stem cells and uh, 
uh, other uh, materials don't, uh, or not already in the clinic. To go to the clinic, we have uh, used what we are using now uh, today in the clinic, nanofibrous membrane. Today for regenerative medicine here, we use collagen membrane animal origin. You can see for bone target for regenerative me medicine here, we have uh, the nonlinear fracture or you have also a sinus lift or uh, the regeneration of bone around the teeth before to uh, implant the the uh, titanium implant for uh, the dental uh, application. The market need here for this bone niche, we have method to increase the speed of bone regeneration, no animal origin, and sustained release of growth factors. This is the market need for regenerative medicine of bone target. The current solution today, we have the collagen membrane uh, soaked in BMPs, BMP2 or BMP7 for Striker or Metronics. They use a lot of BMP, BMP2 here or BMP7. And with this uh, collagen animal origin soaked in BMPs, we have sometimes osteolysis than osteoinduction. And uh, we do not have any sustained release. We have only passive release of these growth factors. So uh, back to the lab, we have a manufactured uh, uh, membrane, nanofibrous membrane here made by polycaprolactone is already approved by the FDA for clinical use. By electrospinning here, you can see here you have a syringe with, with a syringe here, and we can uh, manufacture this electro uh, nanofibrous, this nanofibrous membrane. Uh, to mimic the extracellular matrix of the collagen used today. So uh, this is our implant, manufactured implant in the lab. This is our nano reservoir technology. That means we will uh, treat once, uh, three times or six times. You can see here, we can uh, build the nano reservoirs here around the nanofibers. And this nano reservoir here is made by Kytosan as excipient and uh, in this case BMP2. This nano reservoir technology, uh, you can see here the nanofibers around 500 nanometers and the nano reservoirs from 10 to 50 nanometers and with sustained release due to the cell contact uh, re uh, dependent uh, release of uh, growth factors. Uh, here you can see uh, in, in green here the active molecules on the nanofibers. We did a lot of uh, experiments for bone uh, regeneration uh, in vitro and in vivo. We validate the, the, the increase of the speed of bone regeneration. You can see here the regeneration of bone in contact of hosted bone here in vivo. We uh, have used also to, uh, to increase the speed of bone regeneration, the micro tissues used by the technology of Ensphero. You can see here we have a double 3D system. That means we will not use here the single cells uh, like usual, but we use spheroids. And this uh, spheroids here uh, is the first 3D uh, uh, environment and the second uh, environment here is the 3D nanofibrous membrane. That means by this double 3D system, we can increase the speed of bone regeneration. This technique is validated in vivo. You can see here without, uh, without any uh, sphere width, it's only single cells uh, after one month in Calvary implantation and here with sphere width and active nano reservoirs of BMP2. So that means with the double 3D, we can uh, have more, uh, more bone regeneration uh, in shorter time. We validate this technique by incorporation uh, also uh, here, um, nanoparticles uh, made by Kytosan and by incorporation of VEGF inside. You can see here we have the nanofibers and the nanoparticles uh, as a coating of the nanofibers. And here it's when we add only nanoparticles directly to the nanofibers. You have aggregation here. But here we have, with the nano reservoir technology, we can incorporate the nanoparticles uh, homogeneously around the nanofibers. This is the first product for bone. We can, we can manufacture until one centimeter take here by electrospinning uh, technique. Uh, this is the validation. 
and we did a preclinical trial in dog for bone regeneration for maxillofacial application. For cartilage target, this is another story here. The, it's too complicated system because for cartilage regeneration, we need cells. So we need cells, but some people uh, on the clinic today use, this is the market of the cartilage. Today, they, they take a biopsy of cartilage. They have a chondrocyte and inject chondrocyte. Doesn't work really because the chondrocyte cells goes all in the articulation, but not only uh, in, the, in the defect. They also uh, inject mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow. It's the same story. You have a repair because uh, in this case, we can control by this injection the inflammation, but, but we cannot uh, regenerate really cartilage. They have also mixed alginate, uh, hyaluronic acid, and chondrocyte from patient autologous or collagen membrane with autologous chondrocyte. In this case, it's working. We can have cartilage because we have really implanted, uh, the implantation of something on the defect. But this cartilage, it's not stable. Why? Because uh, here the problem is when you have, uh, when you have cartilage lesion, you have, uh, you have also uh, bone lesion and inflammation. To regenerate cartilage on the lesion doesn't work really. We need to, to, to regenerate the subchondral bone here, the glue between bone and cartilage. In this case, we use the same membrane equipped with uh, active nanoreservoirs of BMP2, and we add mixed alginate and stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow, and here, this is the, the medical device we proposed with the both uh, bone and cartilage regeneration to be sure to regenerate the glue between. This is the results to validate the system. You can see here the cartilage on the top. This is our uh, validation with the collagen membrane already in the clinic to be sure that we can validate with another membrane, not only with polycaprolactone. We have the nano reservoirs. And this is our proposed medical device. Uh, we have the, this publication uh, in, in this year and in the trends, the comments on our technology. And we did a preclinical study and we are asking for money. This is the preclinical study, uh, preliminary result. You can see the cartilage here in ship, implantation in ship. Uh, and we are asking for, uh, um, for finance to uh, the phase one. Uh, clinical trial to validate the cartilage regeneration. This is the, the technology we propose for cartilage regeneration on one surgery, one step. And uh, this technology can be used also for other applications. And we have an Arteos, uh, a startup, Arteos Nanomed, uh, in our laboratory to commercialize this uh, technology. Thank you very much for your attention.